If you want to see how you can make your own custom console just like this beauty, stay tuned and you can learn exactly how. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using Inkscape, and it's not that hard to use once you kind of play around with it a little bit. So to start off, we want to insert whatever image you're going to use. In this case, I'm going to use his logo. From here, you want to go to Path and Trace Bitmap. From there, I usually like to put on the live preview so that way I can kind of see what's going on. And I want to select Edge Detection, and I change the threshold to zero because it ends up making crisper lines. So from there, once you hit OK, it's going to seem like nothing really changed, but basically what it did was it created a path that the 3D printer can basically follow. So you want to delete the original image and then save the SVG file of just the path that we created. From there, we can go to Fusion 360 and do the next step. So once the software loads up, we want to load the SVG file that we just created. From here, I'm going to sketch a rectangle around it so I can make more of the stencil. And once that's done, I'm going to click Create and Extrude, so that way I can make the part 3D printable. You don't need to go too crazy on the height. I usually just do either one or two millimeters. You can go even thinner, but if you want the stencil to be able to last a little bit, one to two millimeters should be more than enough. And from here, you just want to export it as a STL file. Make sure you select the actual image or else nothing will happen. And then from there, you can save and we can then go into our 3D printing software. For me, I like Cura, but I know a lot of other people like Slicer or other 3D printing softwares. Use whatever you feel comfortable with. It's not going to make that much of a difference. So once your 3D printing software opens up, you can drag in and drop your file. And for whatever reason, it usually always ends up being in the wrong orientation. So I'm just going to lay this flat. I know this is the size that I want, and it's not going to take too long to print. And honestly, if it was the wrong size, I would just print another one. So you can then save this wherever you want, and you're done. Now we can go on to the next step. Okay, now we can get to the fun part as soon as we finish dismantling the console. It's a really easy console to take apart with only six Phillips head screws on the bottom. Okay, with that step done, we can now take off the top cover and we can get to more screws. There should be about seven or eight screws holding down the motherboard and the controller ports. From here, you want to take everything out of the console because we're gonna be sanding and you don't want to get dust in any of the parts. One thing you really want to get into the habit of is keeping all of the screws that are the same together. You don't want to misplace anything, and I can't say how many times I've lost screws just because I put them in random spots. As you'll see later in the video, I ended up getting a little container to keep everything in, and this way you don't lose anything. Just remember when you're dismantling the console to take off any ribbon cables carefully. You don't want to damage anything, and these break really easily.
So now that the console's gutted, I'm gonna put the two halves back together. You don't need to put all six screws in. I usually just put two or three, depending on how many screws you have, and put them in opposite corners. This will just make sure that the console doesn't come apart during the hydro dipping process. Basically, you don't want it to come apart mid-submerging because then you have an inconsistent paint job, and that never looks good. Just don't do what I did and put the case on backwards. I realized this maybe a couple minutes in, and yeah, you don't want to do that. So since I took the buttons out, the dish tray will not stay closed, so I'm going to end up using a twist tie to force the dish tray to stay closed. And with that, all that's left for the console right now is to take off the stickers on the bottom. I don't want them to be covered, and I don't know if I'm going to put them back on yet, honestly. Okay, now we can move on to the controller. So just like the console, the controller is actually really easy to take apart, with only a couple screws on the bottom. It's the same Phillips head screw, and once you take off all the screws, the front and back face plates come off very easily. One thing I really love about dismantling these controllers is just how simple they are. They work so well, but the overall design of everything in them just makes it so easy to take apart, and it's just such an enjoyable experience compared to the newer controllers, where you have to take 5,000 screws out just to get to the motherboard. Okay. So now here's the perfect time to clean the console and the controllers. This controller was disgusting, probably because I bought it from a local thrift store, but what are you going to do? It's going to get painted anyways, and I'm going to have to take it apart, so here's the best time to clean it. You really want to make sure that no dirt and grime are on anywhere in here, just because the paint will not adhere properly. I can't say how many times I've seen someone paint something without cleaning it before and the paint just chips right off because they didn't do the proper sanding or cleaning. And now to everyone's favorite part, sanding. Yay, sanding. I mean, it's not all that bad. You can really contemplate on a lot of things right now, and usually I don't mind sanding too much, especially when it's just for this. So basically, you don't want to really scratch up the surface. The more larger scratches that you have in something like this, they're all really going to show. And if you want it to look really distressed, really old, or really beat up, then that's exactly what you want. But I want this to be more on the clean side. I don't want it to look antique. I want it to look new.
So one of the best ways to mask off areas that you don't want paint is just painter's tape. So I didn't want any paint to be on the feet because I was afraid it would make the console stick to whatever surface it was going to be on. And I can't really see that being anything but bad. So from here, I just took some tape, put it oversized, and used an exacto knife to cut it out to the exact size that I wanted. Oh, and a word of advice, don't bother taping out the inside of the buttons. It was just going to be more of a hassle than it was worth, that's why I just scrapped that idea. And now for the best part, we finally get to paint. And for this project, we're gonna use hydro dipping. Basically, you just wanna paint the surface of the water with either spray paint or marbling paint. For this instance, I'm gonna be using spray paint just because I had the colors I wanted to use on hand. It's a really simple process, and all you wanna do is create a swirled pattern with varying different shades of colors just to make a cool marbling effect. And I thought that would be the best way to get the colors of its logo to really shine. So from here, I could have just dipped the console, but I wanted to give it a nice black base coat, so that way the paint would really pop on top of it. In the end product, not a lot of the paint showed through, but it did come out exactly how I wanted it. So here's a cool trick that I learned a while ago. You don't actually have to wait for the paint to dry fully, you can actually just use a hair dryer. This really works well, especially if you're impatient like me, because then you can get this entire project done in about a day compared to the amount of time it would take if you waited for the individual layers to dry.
So once I was actually able to hold the console for the first time, I noticed that little bits of paint got stuck in the grooves, and the easiest way to get rid of it was just a little spatula. This was actually my first time 3D printing stencils, and I was terrified to mess up the console. After putting that much effort into it, and with how beautiful the paint job looked, I really didn't want to have to repaint it because I knew I wouldn't be able to replicate it. So from here, I tried a couple different methods of just seeing how I could get an even coverage. The first one did not end well, and I'm really thankful I practiced it. So after a lot of trial and error, the best method that I found was just to go very lightly back and forth and just miss the paint while holding down the other side so that way no paint went underneath the stencil. As you can see, this stencil looks so much better than the other two I did. So now that I had a little more practice, I felt a tiny bit more comfortable doing this. Okay, not really. I was absolutely terrified the entire time. So from here, basically all I did was center the image where I thought it would look best, and then I used tape just to cover everywhere I wanted to make sure there was not going to be paint. And then you had the moment of truth. No going back from here. And oh my god, my heart was racing. When you haven't done something like this before, it's absolutely terrifying. But I can honestly say that now that I've done this, and that I have the experience, I would definitely do it again, and I know what I can and can't do with this now. And now that we're done with the console, I wanted to do one little thing for the controller. You can't have a jobby video without him saying big boy about seven times. And since he's a big boy himself, I wanted to be able to prove it. So I printed out this little stencil with the best font that I could find, and I honestly think it came out really good. The only thing is that the stencil didn't fit quite perfectly, so I ended up just taking my Dremel, taking down the sides a little bit, and from there I was able to get a nice tight fit, so that way the paint would go on perfectly and we wouldn't have any mishaps. 
I was terrified with the console, so I didn't want to end up messing up here. All that's left for the console now is to add some clear coat. You don't want it to get damaged and spray polyurethane will work perfectly well for this. It's really easy to put on as long as you don't go too heavy because you don't want it to run or pull. So from here, there isn't much left. All we have to do is put the console and the controller back together, and then that's it.
And with that, we're done. I had a lot of fun doing this project, and I had a lot of fun testing myself. I hadn't really done much with 3D printing before this, and I'm definitely going to end up using stencils again in the future. With that being said, thank you for joining me with this, and I really hope that you enjoyed it. If so, join me next time, because we're going to be working on a fey cosplay for my fiancé.